The inductor design is also along similar lines as we discussed for the transformer with few minor variations. Now uh, let me uh, uh, start in this fashion. We know that flux is equal to MMF by reluctance. Now this is equal to permeance into MMF. Permeance is nothing but 1 by reluctance. This is basic equations which you would have studied in your, during your BE. Uh, it's just a recall, just go back into your old notes and the textbooks and you will see that uh, these relationships are valid. Now MMF is nothing but N9. So the flux phi is equal to, I will say lambda permeance into N into I. Now I will multiply both sides by N and this becomes square. Now I differentiate, so m d5 by dt equals permeance into n square into di by dt. We know the Faraday law, I am going to use the Faraday's law, m d5 by dt is equal to l di by dt. So recall this and by comparison you have L equals permeance into N square. This is a very important relationship in the development of the inductance uh, design. Now going a bit further on that. Now when you go to the market to purchase uh, cores, uh, there is something called AL factor which is written on the cores. Now this AL factor is something given as um, uh, 130, just giving some numbers which I will find on typical cores, uh, nano Henry per turn square, something like that. So what it basically means is this is nothing but the permeance value. The permeance, you, you saw that L is equal to permeance into N square or permeance itself is nothing but L by N square. So this is actually Henry per turn square. So in uh, the market, you what is available to you is the permeance in nano Henry per turn square and then they call that one as the EL factor. So don't get confused when you look at the data sheets of some of the core materials or when you go to the market and then see EL factor that is nothing but the permeance you can purchase a given per permeance for the inductor. Now uh, along uh, the similar lines like we did in the uh, for the transformer. Uh, inductor however goes on the energy storage. The size of the inductor is dependent on the energy and energy is equal to half L I max peak square. So let us say this is uh, split into two parts half L I M this is one I M and I I M into I M. Now one of this you can bring the relationship about from L di by dt is equal to N AC dv by dt and because the current is linearly increasing, B also linearly increasing, if current increases from 0 then I will say L I m equals N AC B m. This is a nice relationship, it relates IM and AC or L, IM and AC. So it relates this. Then another relationship to relate it with window area, use like as before, 
the wire cross section area equal to I RMS or I M into K F by J. This will relate um, the wire cross section area and M into A W should be less than K W A W. Now this would relate the uh, A W with I M. Now putting all this together you will see this has A C and this has A W and they are multiplied together that gives you a product and that is the area product. So let me after simplification the area product for the inductor. So the area product AP is equal to AC into AW and is given by for the inductor 2 into energy divided by KW J B M. So you can take KW as 0 0.6 for the inductor. This you can go at 3 into 10 to the power of 6 ampere meter square and this at 0 0.2 to 0 0.25 tesla energy you calculate from the half lim square from the circuit from the electrical perspective and once you have uh, done that we can uh, uh, do the design of the inductor in a very simple way so now let us summarize and list down the steps involved in designing the inductor. So let us summarize the inductor design steps. So as a first step, we find out the value of L. This comes from the electrical circuit analysis which we have already done and we know how to calculate the value of L and next you calculate the energy using the half L I M square. We know the current flowing through the inductor and we know the peak current flowing through the inductor half L I M square you can calculate. Then estimate the area product. Then choose a select the core, select the core, and you know AC and AW from the data sheet. Then after that, the permeance. We need to uh, uh, one thing that you need to understand, I will just put a core like this. The energy in the core is stored in the air gap. Air gap is actually like a capacitance, capacitance and permeance. Are, um, uh, are uh, equivalent I would say. So most of the energy gets stored in the air gap and uh, uh, sometimes they will give an air gap here if you don't get any other core and you have to use a, a regular transformer core of uh, very high permeance and uh, therefore uh, and a, a paper or a mylar sheet is introduced to pro provide air gap where the um, uh, energy can be stored. Otherwise, you will have to go and uh, request the, uh, from the shops and buy a specific Yale value or permeance score which has a lower permeance. Uh, what would be done is that at the time of centering itself, there will be air pockets here and that will actually be used for storing the energy and it would be uh, smoothly distributed uh, throughout the core. This will bring down the permeance value which means it can handle more energy. 
so you have to choose uh, core of a particular permeans if you don't have a core of a particular permeans you can calculate it mu naught mu r divided by lm plus lm plus mu r lg So this is the Parmians um, uh, uh, formula. Again, this is from the basic uh, um, the formulas. Lm plus mu r Lg is the equivalent length of the magnetics, and you know that uh, from here the reluctance is given by L by mu naught mu r a. It is inverse of that one where Lm plus mu or Lg is the equivalent permeans. Lg is the air gap length. Air gap length. Anyway, you don't need to bother too much about this because you may not be using this formula. You will be going and buying, purchasing uh, a core with a specific Yale factor or permeans. Once you know that, you know that this is nano entry per turn square or L by turn. So, so using that relationship N is equal to root of L by lambda or permeans. So this has come basically from the relationship L is equal to lambda N square. From here you can calculate the number of turns. Now after you calculate the number of turns, the wire gauge, find out the wire cross section area again um, uh, using the RMS value by J the current density 3 ampere mm square, find out from the standard wire table and appropriately select a proper wire uh, cross section area. Then after that, you need to do a cross check. And what is the cross check? N is the number of turns into the wire cross section, cross section area should be less than KW into AW. If this agrees, then your design will work and you can stop there. If it doesn't agree, go and choose the next size score, change the value of AC and AW according to data sheet and repeat the process. I shall also uh, put in the Octave M files uh, as examples for you to uh, look at how the transformer is designed for the forward converter and the inductor. That will give you some idea of how it is done and what are the various equations actually used so that you don't make a mistake. Uh, go through those M files that will uh, give you some insight and help you to design uh, the other cores and uh, inductors.